Winter in Pittsburgh is freezing, but we've just seen a very peculiar battle heat up behind me at the Rivers Casino here in Pittsburgh. So day one is really you're walking into a complete unknown. This is a never before seen opponent. As a player, it just plays very differently, like nothing that the internet has ever seen. Four of the world's best players have been taking on an artificial intelligence called Libratus at AI Researcher's Game of Choice, Heads Up No Limit Texas Hold'em. AI systems can come up with solutions that humans initially find surprising. It wasn't just a matter of figuring out a strategy versus a static opponent. It ended up changing the strategy as time went on. It has invented ways of using these tiny bits, huge over bits, and so on, which are typically considered bad moves. But when you look deeply, and when, once you come to understand them, they actually turn out to be better. It's actually showing that they're not bad moves. They just have to be used right. Now, the implications can and will reach well beyond just the realm of gambling, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. For now, let's take a look at Labratus, how it works, and what's happening with the people trying to take it down. We brought in four of the absolute top Heads Up No Limit Texas Hold'em pros to play against the AI called Libratus. Each one of them is individually playing against the AI. My name is Dong Kim, and I've been playing poker for about eight years, and I've been playing professionally for about seven years. And this would be my second time playing an AI. My name's Jason Less. I've been playing poker for about 13 years now. I think the perspective from the humans must be very interesting. Um, for one thing, it has to be grueling. They are playing in aggregate 120,000 hands. So each one of them is playing 30,000 hands. We asked what duration would they like to play it over, and then they decided that they want to play 20 days in a row without any breaks. This is a lot of days playing poker, and it's, granted, it's what they do, they're pros. It, this is their job. I'm gonna play for fun. I mean, 30,000 hands wasn't enough, so. 200 hours in 20 days. That's a lot of poker that's been played, but at a very high level because Labrador is so tough. What it does is when it runs simulations, it uses the information from the way we've played and it tries to figure out the best solution for our style of play. Labrador is an artificial intelligence program. It's software developed by Professor Tuomo Sanholm, and Labrador lives in Bridges which is a new kind of supercomputer we have developed at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Libratus currently runs on 600 nodes of bridges, and each node has 28 cores. It is using currently about 2.7 petabytes of data. We started off in the hole, but like I said, you know, kind of expected because uh, we were figuring things out, we didn't have any data to work with. And then after a few days, we felt like we really had a good strategy going on, and we went from being minus, I don't know, 200, 250K to basically hitting even at one point. I bet you I'm gonna win this hand. <laughs> we were very confident. We're like, we figured this out. It has these holes. We're gonna take it on. And then it improved. Just in the broadest fashion, he two, hits two pair on the river. That's it. So all the time in the background, the algorithm looks at what holes the opponents have found in our strategy. It will prioritize the holes and then it will compute better strategies for those parts of the game. We're being so discouraged because like, we basically went from a good strategy we learned, applied it to the next day and realized like, at the end of that day, those strategies went really poorly because they played much differently. Wow, that's gonna be an interesting hand to put on video. <laughs> We'll take some losses at some point if the opponent really has found out some holes, but those holes will go away. Oh my God, it was absurd. We were like, Jesus, this is not going well. Like the hopes of winning kind of went out the window and then we were just trying to make it close because we really started to get a feel then, a real handle on how much it was improving um, day to day. If you could speak to Labratus, what would you say to it? Please stop. This is really an important milestone for artificial intelligence because unlike other games where the complete state is known, in poker you have to make decisions with incomplete information and without necessarily revealing your own information. Heads Up No Limit Texas Hold'em Poker has emerged as the leading benchmark for measuring the quality of these general purpose algorithms for solving in perfect information games. In contrast, in games that are perfect information like tic-tac-toe, checkers, Othello, chess, go, 
The player whose turn it is to move knows exactly the state of the world. An imperfect information game is a game where when it's a player's turn to move, the player doesn't exactly know the state of the world. Heads up, No Limit Texas Hold'em Poker. It's a huge game of imperfect information. So it has 10 to the power of 160 different situations that the player can face. So that's one followed by 160 zeros. And that's more than the number of atoms in the universe. So you cannot just brute force your way through it. It would be too big to even write down. It takes a machine learning approach that I think is interesting because Professor Sandholm did not teach Labradas how to play very good poker. He taught the rules of poker and then the program found the optimal strategy. So we have not programmed the strategy uh, for poker, we have programmed the algorithms for solving imperfect information games. That's actually what's really true about this AI. It makes like the sickest value bets and value raises. It knows exactly how thin it can go. I swear it like learns from our ranges somehow, I don't know. What makes the broadest style uh, unique is it uses a mixed strategy. It'll do lots of different things with lots of different hands, different frequencies of the time. It plays these weird bet sizes that are typically considered really bad moves. So these include tiny underbets like 10% of the pot or huge overbets like 20 times the pot. Humans aren't like that. Humans, for the most part, tend to be, I'm gonna bet these hands on this flop. I'm gonna check these hands here. I'm gonna raise these hands here. Labratus mixes in a whole bunch of everything to make it unpredictable. It's just very difficult to deal with. So the playing style is really unlike uh, any other human. It forms collective wisdom, things it can refer back to, and then the learning continues. And all of this knowledge feeds back into the program for the next day, for the next round of competition, for the next session. And so what the humans are finding is that as they have tried new things, and they have, Labrados compensates. We analyzed some data and we thought that we had good reason to believe if we three bet a ton of hands to a uh, smaller sizing, Labrados wouldn't play well against that. Because in previous days it wasn't playing that well against that. Because that's really how you're going to beat an AI that has a weakness. You find its weakness and you go all out, or at least that's what we thought. These players are very clever. So, so they are doing coordinated search for holes in the bot. They're playing different, uh, different sizes to see if uh, one of the sizes works better than another. But I think that they come to the conclusion that uh, in the normal range of bet sizes, the biggest holes have already been patched. So now they are playing very large bet sizes. So we came out firing that day with the good old 80% three bet, which if anyone knows anything about heads up, that's just insane. And then we went and looked at the data afterwards and we saw new statistics, new numbers, no, now this, this three bet uh, to this size and stuff was no longer working well. So the humans are now in a way painted into a corner where they're playing these very big bet sizes in hopes of finding holes that haven't been patched yet, but playing these big bet sizes itself is not a very good strategy. And what I think is important in this competition is that Labrados is consistently winning by a very large margin every day. Its record toward the end is even stronger than it was in the beginning. So the way it's looking now, Labrados is going to win. All right, we got the last few hands here. Queen six off, I'm not gonna play it. We played for 20 days and um, we lost pretty decisively. Do we think we could beat it if more time went on? You know, I don't think so. I think we could make it a lot closer, but Labrados is just too good. I can pretty confidently just humbly admit defeat here. <laughs> so I'm very happy that Libratus won uh, with such high statistical significance. There is at this point no question that Libratus is better than the best human players in Heads Up No Limit Texas Hold'em. And I believe that this has significant implications for the future. Who wouldn't want AI assistants to improve their strategic reasoning in negotiation or in their day-to-day -day interactions or businesses? Why wouldn't you have in your negotiations AI support that's superhuman? It's absolutely true that Labrados is not just about poker, but it's a really critical milestone in developing AIs that can solve real-world problems with incomplete information, which are the ones we have to solve to advance society, not just poker. The fact is that this competition is one of over 650 projects that are currently using bridges. In the life sciences, people are solving very large genomics challenges. They are sequencing plants, like wheat, that will let us develop more drought-resistant, pest-resistant crops. 
They're solving problems in metagenomics, understanding how the microbiome within the human gut is affected by and affects diseases like type 2 diabetes that can lead to better treatments and perhaps eventually cures. Someday, Libratus or a system like it might change the way we wage war, conduct business deals, or even treat disease. Our pro players might not have won, but in the process of losing, maybe they just did society a huge favor. Hopefully this sm small little milestone is like my little duty to the world. This point was inevitable. It was, there was going to be a day when AI overtook humans and heads up no limit. And, you know, it just happens to be today. I I'm just, I don't feel bad, I just feel proud and happy that I could be in a position to compete in this when that day came. I really can't wait to see what Professor Sandholm's group is going to apply to next. I think it's going to be more and more AIs interacting with each other, but uh, if done right, and which is very important to me, it's always helping mankind.